The blame fairy sprinkles blame dust on people's heads and lulls them into the blame us syndrome. The symptoms of this syndrome may include denial, immaturity, irresponsibility, mood swings, name calling, and bitterness toward others for our circumstances. However, there is a cure for blame us syndrome, a healthy, Ongoing dosage of personal responsibility. Welcome to the Conquer Life Podcast, hosted by the coolest dynamic duo husband and wife team since Uncle Phil and Aunt Viv, Corey and Topanga, and even George and Weezy. Bringing you life experience, knowledge, wisdom, and insight to help you in your own life journey. This is the Conquer Life Podcast with Trey and Autumn Hollis. Welcome to episode 16 of the Conquer Life Podcast. This episode, we're talking about blamers. Blamers. Come out and play. Well, here we are again, another week, another episode of the Conquer Life Podcast. How you feeling today, Autumn? I'm feeling well, sir. How are you? <laughs> I'm stuffy, almost like I got allergies or something, but uh, I don't know, it might do, be due to the rain and, and whatnot we've had recently, and, and then the temperature's dropping, and the fact that we record outside, and... All sorts of pollen and fun stuff down here. Gosh darn it, pollen. I blame you. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) Blaming. So, how are we going to get into this? I don't know. It's your idea. It's our idea. It's in the book. It's your fault. (laughs) (laughs) Blamer syndrome. Blamers, 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 blamers. It's not my fault. It's their fault. I didn't do it. I didn't mean to do it. I don't know. Or I don't want to know. I don't want to know. I didn't do it. It's their fault. They made me do it. Well, it's funny that you more so see this really evident with kids back and forth. He did it. (laughs) No, she did it. No, da 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 what specifically our kids yeah yeah it uh it can be an issue but it's funny that that actual behavior continues to go into adulthood people aren't taking uh, responsibility for their actions well yeah i mean because why it's easier to blame shift and project our own responsibility of something onto someone else it's, you know, sometimes it's hard for us to stop and look at ourselves and see what part we played in something, you know, or, or even circumstances outside of our hands. Um, you know, there, there are situations of cause and effect to where we are affected, and you know, due to situations and events that occurred that really totally were out of our hands. That's fully understandable. But what we're talking about is what we outline as the blamer syndrome in which there's things that sometimes, not sometimes, many times that we do have control over, but we choose to say, oh, well, it's someone else's fault that I'm in this situation. When in fact, a lot of times if we look at it, if we really break it down to the itty bitty nuts and bolts and to the root, it's whose fault? I'm looking at the man in the mirror of change. (laughs) It's a lot of times it's the person in the mirror. 
you know, and, and, and we don't necessarily want to get into fault. You know, again, sometimes it's just self uh, misunderstanding, something that, you know, it's just a mistake. It's a, it's a misstep that we took in life. And it's just, ah, uh, oh, shoot, I should have done that differently. I mean, for myself, it was huge missteps and mistakes. And I can, I, you know, at this point, I can only look back and say, hey, what can I learn from that? I, I own that. I accept responsibility for my choices, for my decisions. And now I must learn from that and decide to move forward and not make those same decisions when faced with those same circumstances. See, I think when you're having to start making those changes and accept personal responsibility for things, it could be the hardest step that you can take. The very hardest because, you know, it, it, w once you're already used to um, personal growth and development and, and, and you're already on your journey, you start being able to take more personal responsibility for your actions. But the initial step is hard because you have to keep that mirror up. You have to be willing to look at it and say, how did I play a part in it? Mm -hmm. um, and oftentimes, you know, that blame shifting becomes so easy and so very trivial to our um, efforts and yeah. where we want to go. Well, you heard uh, that funny guy in the beginning open the show. And yes, that was me. Uh, You're funny. <laughs> oh, oh, you got jokes? Yes, always. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, it boils down to the blame fairy. You know, sprinkling blame dust on people. And, and it's like we're in denial. We have this situation in this moment to where it's like, oh, I'm going to deny the fact that I had anything to do with that. That's someone else's part that my life took a turn. How dare they? You know, and that's when we start being immature and irresponsible. And we have the mood swings and the name calling and the bitterness. You know, it, it, it's just... But like like I said there, the cure for blamer syndrome is to fully develop personal responsibility. I want to add something because because uh, I was just it was hitting me as as you were reading that, and I was thinking about you know our sons with the other day making the nine one one call. <laughs> oh Lord, have mercy. Okay. <laughs> um. Our five-year-old decided, because his brother was teasing him and saying an ambulance was coming for him, so he decides to grab the phone and, and give 911 a call. And I guess he went to check and see. I guess, yeah. <laughs> I think that's he wanted to verify, is someone coming for me? What, what's wrong? Um, after, you know, we rectified the situation to find out what was going on, you know, the, the five-year-old took responsibility. Yes, I did call and, 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 you know, he had to deal with consequences. But the instigator of the situation, I didn't make the call. I had nothing to do with it. Yeah. And he was in complete denial at the fact that he contributed to cause that action. And oftentimes we can even see that, you know, uh, the people around us can make decisions that can mess them up but what have we fed into it and until we start to actually look at how we're also feeding into other people's lives and how it's affecting them it can become a big issue well yeah that's when we project and we make someone else become the blamer because they actually made the call because they, exactly he made the call and 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 seeing that was a thing he was hey, he did it he talked it and when he came you know when he told us what exactly happened then it's like, oh, wait a minute. So now we have to go question the eight-year-old and say, did you do this? Did you do that? Did you? No. I didn't go. He called. He called him. But then it comes down, oh, well, you were the one that was teasing him and instigating and saying that, oh, the ambulance was coming for him. So, you know, and, and think about this, though. That Those are kids. Yeah. Now, when adults do that, it's like, have you grown up? 
How are you in your 20s or 30s or 40s or 50s or 60s still blaming everyone else because your life took the wrong turn? Oh, well, if if my teacher would have taught me this or if my parents would have taught me that, I used to do it, too. Oh, my parents didn't teach me blah, 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 blah. Well, you know what? I got to be a big boy. I got to say, you you know what? True indeed, they didn't teach me this or that. Oh, I need to go learn this and that. Yeah, there's, there's a huge amount of, of self-learning that needs to be focused on, especially when you're trying to be uh, accountable because you, you get to a point where you have to say, okay, you know what? What am I missing? And if I keep on missing these things, then what do I have to do to fix it so I can move on? Otherwise, yeah. you stay in the same rat race, in that little circle with little hamster. Going and going oh, and going. Potato. And going. <laughs> baked potato. Just going around and around in the cycle because it's always someone else's fault. You know, let me read another excerpt from this. When we arrive at the level of committing to ourselves, we must also own responsibility for our actions or lack thereof. The journey of personal development demands personal accountability. You can't blame others for your circumstances if you decide to drop the ball in life. For example, if you need to learn a new skill to prepare for a job you want, whose responsibility is it to go out and learn that skill? Whose responsibility is it to find out where you can take a class to learn that skill? Whose responsibility is it to study? We can't put the blame on our high school teachers or college professors for not teaching us everything. As I said earlier, we have to take it upon ourselves to go out and be self-directed in learning what we need to know and do in order to accomplish what we desire. On the other hand, when we make a, a mistake, no matter how large or small, we must also bear that responsibility. We must step beyond the fear of admitting a mistake and being corrected. Being corrected is not a bad thing. It's an opportunity to grow. We must shake the fear of feedback. Feedback is also an opportunity to grow. Why do you think some companies conduct immense amounts of marketing research and focus groups? They're seeking feedback so that they may improve their product or service. All those little um, uh, surveys that you take online from a, you know, from a company after you call customer support. I had to call Apple because our podcast image wasn't syncing into uh you know into the itunes store so i called them two times and finally the second time i'm like look it, this isn't working i don't know what happened da, 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 da. i said i've double checked and triple checked the rss feed i don't know what's wrong and the guy said well uh I, I, you know let me check let me check and so they did some checking and and they did some things and at the end of the second call i decided to go and double check again and all of a sudden miraculously it updated while I was on the phone with them. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you got to put the little... Hold on, wait. There it goes. Oh, no, what? no. That's not what I was saying. Hold on. <laughs> no. I'm blaming you, know what? you now. Stop blaming me for this. No, this is what I was saying. There it is. That's the blamer. Fairy oh. dust. Okay, gotcha. Mm, special effects. Golly, see, you gotta, we gotta get, we gotta get on that level to where you know when the special effects. Anyway, you know what? I think you need to make me <laughs> cards just so I know. We need cue it's cards. Your fault. Huh? <laughs> it's my fault. Um, but yeah, so after all of that, I get an email, and it's like, oh, can you please take this quick survey uh, with your experience with Apple support? So I'm like, okay, cool. So I mean, it took me five minutes, but they are seeking that feedback. Because they're not going to, you know, what's a company to do? Oh, it's your fault. It's your fault that your podcast image isn't updating. No, they can't do that. You know, how many customers would be like, oh, well, oh yeah, oh, yeah, I did everything I'm supposed to. Screw you, I, Apple. You de delete, delete, delete. Yeah, delete, delete. Get my show off. No, wait, no, I need to, wait, we need to expose. Okay. Um, so, yeah, they're seeking feedback so that they may improve their product or service. Companies are continually refining how they take on personal responsibility for their business because they understand what it takes to grow. This is what personal responsibility is about, growth. When we own our actions and inactions, 
We open the door to personal growth and development, and we slam the door on the blame fairy. I think we need a sound effect like a door slam, and that would be like really, really good. Okay. Hold on, wait, 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 wait. Let me see. We'll edit. Let me see right now. And we slam the door on the blame fairy. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) So, I mean, again, don't let the blame fairy sprinkle blame fairy dust on you. Own your decisions. I see it so much, and, and I guess I'm about to get into some sticky, sticky stuff here. Sticky icky. Sticky icky. Not that sticky icky, though. Um, think about politics, all right? That was really the inspiration for that subject. I'm, I'm, we, we're about to get real and, and to the point with this. Um, I see it too many times. I remember when President Obama was elected in office. Five months later, everybody is blaming him for losing their jobs and doing this and doing that. And you can't. You can't. I don't care if you're Republican, Democrat. Personally, I'm independent. Okay? Um, you can't blame the president five months after being inaugurated due to, you know, the, the housing crash and everything that happened in 2007 before he was inaugurated. Uh, you know, you can't blame him for the loss of your job. You can't blame him for going into foreclosure. You, you can't. I'm going to blame this jet, though, right now, um, <laughs> just simply because I can. This is a standard part of our broadcast. Yeah, this is, yeah I know, right? <laughs> it happens it every ha- week. happens every episode. Get used to it. Uh, until we can broadcast from the keys where it's nice and silent and you'll only hear the crashing of waves. Or the beer bottles. Over the beer bottles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But um, but no, seriously, I mean, there are certain things that, yes, we can say, well, this is the politician's fault for making this decision or making that decision. Like, for example, the housing market crash, if you really look into it, was a result of the repealing of the Glass-Steagall Act in which banks were then able to do a lot of crazy lending, which you saw in the 2000s, the early 2000s, that led up to 2007. And these banks went buck wild crazy. Oh, you make minimum wage? Here's a $250,000 loan for you. Go buy a big house. You can't do that. And many people, again, getting back to personal responsibility, wanted to blame those banks and blame those mortgage brokers. Well, you didn't tell me everything in the small print. Whose responsibility is it to read the small print? Hmm. Ouch. Yeah. Now, I'm not slamming people who got foreclosed on. I'm not slamming you people who lost your jobs. Not at all. I went through it too. Due to my own Poor, uh, what, what, what did I get canned for? <laughs> I'm trying to think now. Can't remember. It was, uh, oh, my poor job performance. I was not punctual. In other words, I was late than a month a lot of times. But that was just because of the type of personality that I was back then. And, um, and obviously due to you know, really going through school and learning about myself and, and growing in self-awareness and understanding who I was, I was able to make those corrections that needed to occur so that, guess what? I accept personal responsibility for my poor performance, my poor job performance back then, you know. But, but no, I'm not slamming any of you, um, those of you who may be listening who have gone through those things, It's just one of those times, though, again, you can't just stop and lay blame on everybody else without checking yourself and seeing what part you played into the overall equation. Now, a lot of times blame or fault 
more than likely is shared. You know, in situations where you're dealing with other people, a lot of times it is shared. We'll be honest. But don't make the first thing you do, blame it on someone else for your circumstances. And then you own none of it. You know, that's the problem. Well, yeah, because I think that there's there's a, a big failure to analyze things. Yeah. You know, I have the opposite problem. I overanalyze everything, and I'm thinking of different possible possible scenarios and how things can break down. Um, you know, but even like if you look at the housing market, mm-hmm. people had a certain level of responsibility that they have to own. And the banks are also partly responsible as well because they shouldn't, you know, that's why they had those caps with 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 certain income requirements as well as uh, certain credit score requirements because those credit, people credit score, score. Oh, yeah okay. sorry score i'm from florida <laughs> credit store <laughs> go ahead um fit within the certain requirements because they were they they were more uh apt to be able to be financially secure to secure that loan um i i, I want to interject and say Let's also be honest. The banks did some shady shenanigans. Shenanigans. They pulled some stuff that, I mean, they manipulated the market and took advantage of people. So I will, again, that goes back to that shared fault. That happens. That occurs. But. Now you just made me lose it. It is so much your fault. I had a good point. I really did. Hold on. Let me think. We're talking about the, the, the blame. The the banks. I know. I just blamed it on you. Oh. Because you interjected. Wah, wah, wah. Well, we'll get back to it another time. Well, okay. <laughs> so, I guess to, to get toward a conclusion, um... The blame fairy is real, much akin to the tooth fairy and Santa Claus and and the Sandman. And the blame fairy comes around and the blame fairy will sprinkle that blame dust on you so that you don't look at yourself. You don't look at the part that you play in your life. I had a screwed up childhood. Now, if my life continued to stay, to, 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 to stay screwed up, it would be due to myself, right? As an adult, I should be able to look beyond those things, correct? I mean, even, even you know, whether it be if I had to go get therapy, whatever the case, get a life coach, whatever the case may be. I can't sit here and blame my screwed up childhood for the rest of my life. Well, it's my parents' fault I used to get high. And it's, it's, my, it's my dog's fault. My dog's name was Snoopy. And all he did was sit on his roof. It was, really, I had a dog named Snoopy. No, you did Yes, I did, in Long Beach. Yes, his name was Snoopy. Are you serious? I'm dead serious. It was Why am I fault. hearing about this now after 18 I years of marriage? I never talked about Snoopy much. But Snoopy was a beautiful dog, but it's his fault. He left too early. I don't know. <laughs> no, but really, I did have a dog named Snoopy when I lived in Long Beach off of 21st Street. 21st Street! Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I can't just go through life blaming my parents and blaming my circumstances and blaming drugs and blaming all of these different things. See, and that's, it, it comes down to personal responsibility. You know, I had to make a decision and say, Hey, this, th- this is screwed up. I uh, screwed up my life. I made the choices that I did previously. Now, now I'm, you know, my life is hey, my life is back on the good track going forward. And I praise God and thank God for that. Um, And, you know, ultimately, that goes for anybody out there. It goes for everybody out there. You know, like I said, I see it so often. It's always somebody else's fault for our circumstances. And then... We get so ingrained in in making excuses for everyone else and blaming 
Because, you know, excuse is another form of blaming. Well, if only, if only the clock alarm had gone off in time, I never would have been late all those times. Oh, well, maybe it was my responsibility to set the alarm. Oh, okay, that's right. Every now and then you have a power failure and then you really don't hear the alarm because it doesn't go off, but that's rare. Or I wouldn't have hit that pothole if the person in front of me didn't slam on their brakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I wouldn't be in such a bad mood this morning because um, the kids were doing this, that, and the other, and I had to tell them to stop. And then we were running late. You know, it, it, it continues to drag mm -hmm. with us. And here's a, here's a sad part about blame is it continues to ruin your day, your life. And who is it really affecting? It, you and the others around you. Because ultimately, you're not getting the best that you can get out of your life and those that share that life with you and those that interact with you. You're affecting everybody. Yep. yep. You know, bring the best to the table or bring the Brent blame fairy along and then mm -hmm. just watch everything go downhill from there. And it's, it's, it's sad, you know. Friends. Oh, my friends screw me over. They aren't real friends. You picked them. You let them into your life like that. Boyfriend, girlfriend. Oh, he screwed me over again. Oh, she screwed me over again. You picked him. No one told you to pick him. You can step cautiously. Nothing wrong with stepping cautiously. A lot of times it comes down to being aware. Awareness. 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 The first fundamental to the four universal fundamentals of success. Awareness. We've talked about it. Be aware of who you're dealing with. Be aware of yourself. If you have the propens propensity to, 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 to blindly step into things, you need to be aware of that so then you can open your eyes. These are not things that change overnight. It takes time. Everything takes time. Success takes time. However you define success takes time. But ultimately, it comes down to personal responsibility rather than blaming someone else. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Um, just oftentimes it breaks my heart for people not to be able to see it. You know, yeah. really, truly see it. And, they, and you know, you can, you can sit with somebody, whether you're coaching or mentoring them, and, and you're saying, well, you know, what's going on in your life right now? And they can say, well, I got this going, that going. Well... Well, how did you get to that point? Well, so-and-so did this, so, uh, you know, I, I, I just had to deal with this, and then this was happening, and, and you just hear the story going around, and it's like, well, what action are you going to take? What are you actually going to own up to, and what are you going to do about it? You know what's a trip? What? A lot of times, the blamer syndrome comes into play when we allow ourselves to be led astray by distractions. Excellent point. Again, comes down to our own personal choices. Oh, man. Shoot. Went to the club, man. And, man, I got, man, I got wasted, man. But somebody stole my wallet, man. Can't believe they did that. All these thieves around here stealing wallets. Nobody told you to get drunk enough to where you lose your faculties and then your wallet is out there sitting on the bar and somebody swipes it. I'm just saying. I'm sure that's happened. It's never happened to me, but I'm sure that's happened. Yeah, there's <laughs> what? I'm just I can actually picture that happening to somebody and then going blaming, getting pissed off in the middle of the DMV. Well, someone stole my wallet. Well, how did that happen? Well, I was drunk and passed out at the club. Well, do you not see the connection here? Nah. Hmm. I think it would be a good exercise and when people want to start blaming people to start recording themselves and then play it back to see if they yeah, hear something. Yeah, yeah. Take your phone out, hit record. That's what it is. That's what you need to do. So, think about this. 
what's going on in your life that you're putting off on other people or other things or other situations or circumstances? What's going on in your job that you want to blame the job? What's going on uh, in your relationship that you want to blame the other person? Think about those things. Think about what we're blaming and then think about how we or you play a part in it, in that whole big picture. What's your role in that? How did you contribute to the missteps or the mistakes that you uh, are experiencing the consequences for? Consequences. Sad thing. Well, consequences are, you know, for every uh, action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Yeah, oftentimes I don't think um, people really play that out. Mm-mm. And that that is just just very unfortunate until they're until they're really deep in the water. And that goes back to awareness again. I remember my parents used to always tell me, "You better think before you do something. Think about the consequences. How could that affect you?" Okay, as an adult, I do think now. There's another one. You've heard the cliche, think before you speak. Ouch. How do your words affect people? And how do your words affect yourself? Think about the, 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 the lady who was on the flight from England to South Africa. I'm going to Africa tomorrow. Hope I don't get AIDS. Just kidding, I'm white. Oh, okay. Think before you tweet. Think before you Facebook. I've said it before on Facebook, 95% of the things that I think about and even type out don't get clicked to send or post. Not because I'm saying some, you know, totally outlandish stuff. It's just because I think about others and how they may receive it. And, you know... A lot of things get lost in translation when it comes to written word if it's not communicated really thoroughly and effectively. And sometimes I don't feel like writing a whole manifesto as a post. I do a lot of sharing on Facebook. Some people may even call me the overshare or the gangster of Facebook. Sharing is caring. (laughs) Sharing (laughs) is caring. Sharing is caring. No, but I mean, I think before I post, I think before I speak, I think before I tweet. And everything that I put out there, I put out there with a purpose. And if something comes back to me, I can't blame anyone else but myself. You had the guy after the Chick-fil-A thing. He goes through a Chick-fil-A drive-thru and goes off on the lady. They did another update story on him. Turns out they're living in a trailer and and he's just saying his life is in shambles. And and I'll be honest, I feel for the guy. I feel for him. In this day and age, everybody's so sensitive that you got to really check what you say before you say it. And if you think that something may come back on you, then you might not want to say it. I know I saw an interview with uh, Red Man. Red Man is a rapper. And they talked about it. It was on The Breakfast Club. And they talked about it. And he talked about how people are so sensitive in this PC age that we live in. You can't say the same things in this day and age that you could get away with back in 95 or 97 or even 2000. It's, you know, it is what it is. And so that's why we have to adapt and, and change. Otherwise, you say the wrong thing, then you get, you know, the, the, the pitchforks of Twitter coming up, pitchforks, tar and feather of Twitter coming after you. Then you can't blame anybody but yourself. You tweeted it. Yeah, and deleting is not, 
not yeah. necessarily <laughs> not be able to help. Deleting doesn't really do much because people take screenshots. I always see it. Now, oh, it was deleted five minutes later, but someone was able to grab a screenshot. Blasted all over again. <laughs> all over everywhere. So, the blamer syndrome and the blamer fairy. Personal responsibility. Own it. Own it. We out? Oh, wait. What we, highs and lows? Yeah, we didn't do high. We didn't do it. Okay. Highs and lows. Go. Highs this week. Um, oh, our baby boy just broke a tooth. Yeah. It's going to be six months soon, and finally we got something there. Yeah. So that's my high, because I've been waiting for that thing to come out. <laughs> um, <laughs> and my right. low. Your low? Go my for it. My low. Um... I would actually have to say just just being tired and trying to catch up with just the normal everyday mundane responsibilities that come into play. I mean, you know, that's it's not something that I necessarily want to do where it's taking care of household and dinners and that ongoing household race, but it is what it is. It is. It is. Um Golly, my high. Golly, I don't know what my high was this week. Or my low. You have no highs and lows? Not really. I mean, it was just like a... It was a chill week for me. That's all right. I guess I'm high. I'm I'm high. <laughs> Um, my high would probably be, you know, again, the baby getting his tooth, uh, coming in. Um, oh, I, well, my high would be iTunes taking care of, or, or the, you know, finally seeking, or sinking, rather, uh, the podcast image. Um, that was a big deal to me, because I'm like, wait a minute, it still has the old image. Everything else is, is clean on all the other sites, and... Um, I guess another high I got uh, we we got the podcast on Tune In, uh, so if you're a Tune In listener, uh, you can jump over to Tune In, and we do have the podcast available there, the Conquer Life podcast. Just search for it; you'll find it. Um, my low, oh. boop, 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 I know what your low boop. was. What's my low? You couldn't wash the truck because of the weather. Okay, yeah. That yeah, there you go. Cause I, I, two weeks, two weeks now without washing our vehicle, and I try to keep it clean. And oh, oh, we've been getting like this overcast on the weekends. Cause heck, by the time I get off, it's it's almost dark. So you know, you know how that goes. Can't necessarily do much when it comes to washing a vehicle after that. And I don't really go to the little self car wash thing, and I don't go through the you know the gas station car wash because they never really truly get clean, um, not to my standard. But uh, but yeah, I'm gonna blame the weather. I'm gonna blame the weather, concern it, weather you. But really, the weather's out of my control. So <laughs> that's my love. <laughs> Y'all tune in next week for episode 17. I can't believe we're going on episode 17. Um, we've been consistent with getting these out. We only skipped one week, and that was due to family illnesses. Um, if but, you want to catch up on some replays, what? Go ahead. But there was that one week with The Flash that we did two episodes, so technically we're even. That's true. We caught we caught up. That's right. That's right. Um if you do want to catch up on previous episodes, you can visit us at ConquerLifeMindset.com. And there, right now, uh, it jumps straight to the podcast page. And you'll see on the right-hand side in the right bar, the SoundCloud player. Or you can also click on the iTunes icon. That'll take you to iTunes for you Apple folks. Uh, Stitcher. Radio. Uh, if you're on Android, you can click on that. That'll jump over to Stitcher. And uh, or if you already have the SoundCloud app installed on your mobile device, click there and on on the uh, SoundCloud player, and you can catch up on previous episodes. 
And is there any other housekeeping? No, it's pretty clean. Okay. That's it. 40 minutes for this one. We still kept it down in time, so. We out. We out. No more blaming. Personal responsibility. I'm looking at the man in the mirror. I'll change. I'm